<laughs> Hello and good evening. Welcome to episode three of 25 with Tech 25. Uh, I'm Tim Higgins, Secretary of District 25, uh, joined by Andrew Benton. I'm Data and System Specialist for the District. Chris Fano, Director of Technology. And back on the, the guest couch over there, we have Brad Katz. And why don't you step forward, Mr. Harris? We have Adam Harris, who is the new district uh, communications coordinator uh, here, sitting in, seeing what we do on the show. I uh, just want to introduce Adam to the uh, to the world. Um, hello, everyone in Arlington Heights School District 25. It's very exciting to be here. I was hired in July, and I spent my previous seven years in radio, and I'm now the communications coordinator for the district. What that means is I. Um, get our message out, our district's message, out to the community and um, to the public and within schools um, through many, many forms, through social media and through the media. And um, yeah, that's it. Well, thanks. And actually, the reason that we wanted to have Adam on today was because today we are talking about uh, communicating using the technology that we have available to us. Um, we're going to do this like the last couple of episodes, and we are going to rapid fire, just throw some stuff at you. Uh, and it, it's going to be to uh, to for you then to kind of take it to the next level and explore it. Of course, always ask questions of us um, as questions come up uh, here at uh, the at sd25.org um, or tweet at us at ahsd25tech um, on Twitter, which we will talk about here in a second. So um, just to jump right into things, um, I'm going to share our screen here and I want to actually just bring up something that Brad Katz talked about last week in terms of training I have something that we just wanted to follow up on um, which we can see now up here in the upper right is this little uh, button called training um, and this is that synergist synergize synergist um, application that we in, installed last week that was giving us a couple of problems um, but here it has shown up today and we believe that that had to do with um, some of their own server issues um, going on. So what will happen once you install that extension, and remember that you can always go to the Chrome um, the Chrome Web Store, search for Synergize, um, and then you can install any sort of, of extension. And what this particular one does is if you click on it, um, we click on Gmail this, what is, is a Gmail? communication tool that is built around email. We get this kind of e this little robotic voice walk us through the different topics um, in which that we which we clicked on um, and this is available actually through all of uh, Google's applications on here uh, not just Gmail not just drive it's available for everything we even have it for our admin side um, as well so uh, check that out that is uh, synergist s y n e r g y s e um, and it is a training module that can be added straight into Google um, so from there we are going to move on into our communications talk for today um, and the one thing I want to mention right off the bat is being able to do screen capturing uh, which is you know to kind of either whether it's running each other through tutorials running students through tutorials it's a great tool to be able to say you know give a set of directions show how that process works and then to save it to be able to share it uh, ongoing instead of having to repeat yourself over and over again um, it's one of the reasons, you know, we're able to, or the, one of the reasons we like that we can record these shows is that it can be watched over and over again instead of us answering the question over and over again. Um, so QuickTime Player is an application that's on every Mac computer. Um, you can find it in your launch pad or you can find it in your applications folder. Um, and if you click on it, nothing all that exciting happens if there's no video file being opened. But we do notice that up in the upper left-hand corner, I mean, our menu bar, it says QuickTime Player, which means that we're in the application. And if we click on the file menu, we have three options right off the bat to do three different things. We can do a movie recording, we can do an audio recording, or we can do a screen recording. Um, a movie recording does just that. It will record exactly what the camera built in your computer is picking up right then and there. Um, but the one that I really like is the screen recording, which will, as it sounds, as soon as we hit that red record button, it tells us here that anything that is seen on the screen here will be recorded. And so you, you can kind of move things move things around, um, run through different processes, 
and it will be recorded to be shown as a video later on. Um, and we see that as soon as we hit start recording, we can do kind of whatever we want. We can pull windows into view. We can click on the dock, all of this sort of stuff. Um, and then when we are done, we'll see that there's a little stop button that was placed up here, which will open a brand new video window and allow us to play back the video that we just created. So we see that my cursor is moving around, doing all the things that I just did on screen. Um, from here, you can upload this video straight into Drive um, or upload it to YouTube, do all sorts of different things. You can put it into iMovie and edit together a larger movie, all sorts of options um, to be able to share, share instructions, share the cool things that you are doing on your computer. Thank you. I think, I think we're going to see Adam using this a little bit more going forward. Um, which actually, you know, running people through the process of how to set up Twitter, how to work all of those social media things might come in handy for you. Um, now, speaking of uploading videos into Google Drive, um, that is one thing that we would be able to do with this particular option. Um, there's another way. So now, and actually, I'm going to switch this back here quickly to our view here. Mobile devices, so cameras. We are able to record all sorts of things in the world that we live in. We all have some sort of iPhone, iPad around the room in your pockets um, that make it very easy to to uh, record things. And so in a second here, I'm going to record a couple things. And what we can actually do is very easily using the Google Drive application um, for our mobile devices, we can record and send things straight into Google Drive. Um, without really too much of a headache at all. So I'm going to share my iPad screen here. And if we go into our camera app here, we can see, you know, all the people I'm sitting at the table with. Now say we're talking about, you know, something cool here, 3D printing. We are looking to uh, get out into the schools a little bit more. And so if I record... That quick little video and head back out onto our main screen. I've installed the Drive app. We see it down in the lower right hand corner. If I open Drive, we see that there's a little red plus sign here. We can hit the plus, we can hit upload, and it asks me where we want to go from. I'm going from photos and from videos. And if I go into my camera roll, I can choose that video that I'd like, and we'll see that it uploads straight into Google Drive. So it gets added to the rest of our documents. And so we can see that we have this little video has just uploaded uh, in the last couple of seconds. And so we now have a movie right into our Google Drive where from here we can either download it to the computer, put it into iMovie to edit, um, or we can share it with other people. Um, it's definitely possible that while uh, I was sharing the iPad screen, there was no audio. Um, if there was not, I'll dub some over the, uh, the video to watch later. <laughs> um, but really it's just a matter of recording, using that Google Drive app to upload, um, and then once you have it here, you can do kind of whatever you would like with it. Um, and one of those other things being uploading to YouTube, if you'd like, um, because since everybody has a Google Drive or a Google account, um, that actually also gives you a YouTube account and a YouTube channel <coughs> for you to store any videos that you would like directly on here. So if you click on my channel, uh, you get brought into this YouTube page where in the upper right hand corner, we can upload anything we would like and so we can click on our like little red upload arrow and we can choose any sort of video we would like um i didn't save our video from before but we would uh select whatever we wanted and you would upload it like you would upload any other file and here it would live on your youtube page um, and from there um, you'd easily be able to share out the link via email via twitter um, or one of those other sort of social networking social media type methods uh, and you can kind of share out what's happening in your classroom what's happening in your building pretty easily that way 
Um, so that's sort of different ways of getting media up into you, to, to your space and to share it amongst ourselves here in the district. Um, another way of communicating, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew to talk about, and that is just simple uh, sort of text and uh, sort of phone video conferencing yeah, right. options it's as well. Basically way less exciting, to be honest. It's just uh, basically instant messaging as opposed to all that fun video stuff that he was showing. Uh, first of all, let's give love to Tim for, he is really under the weather, but he's fighting through this thing. So he's, uh, you can't see him on screen, but he's really struggling to get these words out. So good for him. Which isn't all that much different from Wait every other day anyways, but Wait, that's a good excuse. Oh, me. I don't mean that. I mean that you're choking. <laughs> that's what I mean. So anyway, uh, we only have 25 minutes. So uh, Google Chat is basically instant messaging. I'm sure you've all used instant messaging in the past where it's basically the quickest way to communicate, right? So, so if you don't want to wait on somebody to respond to an email, then you can add them as a, as a contact over here on the left and you can hit them as quick as, here I am talking basically to myself out of the Tech or Turtle account. And just get the super quick um, question out and get the super quick answer back. Okay, so that's how fast that can happen. That's that's instant messaging. Again, you guys know that. That was really easy because I already had the contact over here. It was happened to be myself, but I had the contact <laughs> over here. There's a little green dot next to my name, which happens to mean that I am active and available online and that you can, you can come and ask me whatever question that might be. Uh, one really quick uh, example was during map testing, I'm responsible for some uh, basically creation of really new kids who might have just started that day and they need they're sitting at a computer and need to be map tested um, immediately the the proctor realized the kid wasn't in they chatted me really quick saying here's the name can you help I was able to add the student and um, chat back that it was done and they were able to start right away <laughs> Awesome timing. We just had the uh, lawn crew with not one but two lawn mowers go right by our window. So that's what's happening there. So in this environment, there happens to be these three names, but there may be, now that you're learning all this great stuff about this instant messaging, G chat, <coughs> this little um, magnifying glass allows you to start typing a person's name. So I'm going to pick Chris and I'm going to click this little hang out with this contact, hang out. This is a video call, we'll get to it in a second, but this is hang out with this contact. So I simply started a search, I came over, hang out with this contact. This is what you'll likely see the first time that you're trying to uh, communicate with somebody via this G chat, via this instant message. And that is uh, basically, Chris is getting an invite right now. And when he accepts the invite, then he'll permanently be in my list over here and we'll be very quick to um, to be able to communicate in the future. Did you get anything? I should have that invite on there. Okay, so down here. Let me right here. In the settings, right here, I think. I guess not. Pending invite. Okay, so we were just showing that. Uh, that uh, okay. So there's Chris, and then when he's in his Gmail, I'll be able to communicate with him. I don't see a green dot yet, so it's probably just taking a second. But anyway, that's how you add. It's as simple as clicking on the uh, magnifying glass and starting to type the person's name. You can chat with multiple people. You can add. One other thing I wanted to show is that I can be in i can be in a chat with this person realize that we need to maybe share the screen maybe i need to share my screen with them or i need to see their screen and so one of the things you can do is actually start a video call i don't know how this is going to come through <laughs> so i'm actually we're calling andrew
And so and, there's uh, there's Tim answering. Okay, the audio is probably gonna go crazy. So that's how quick you can actually you can actually invite the person to um, join a video call. At that point, I wasn't able to show it because of the feedback, but we can uh, just click on a simple button in the upper left that says share the screen. So it could be it's not you know when you talk about video call, it doesn't have to mean that you're just talking about seeing each other on camera, which of course it does. You can also uh, take over screens and assist the person with whatever it is they might be struggling with. Um, in terms of settings, you just click right on the little drop down. Uh, one of the things we wanted to mention is notifications right here. You can have sounds happening for incoming messages. We don't really do the phone calls piece. But uh, another thing that will happen is if you're in another app, if you're in some sort of uh, other page, if somebody's trying to get you, your little Gmail um, header right here, will actually start blinking saying that that person wants to communicate that person just sent me a chat so you might be working somewhere else you, you'll probably hear a little you will hear a little ding and you'll get familiar with that ding and you look up here and it'll be blinking saying that they want to chat you come in here and there'll be somebody down here wanting to chat with you so that's uh, pretty immediate um, and really a great way to do it So that's actually my piece. I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Tim to let us know what is next. So one of the things that actually I'm going to bring up our camera here again. Uh, so I'm bringing Adam back up to talk about a uh, a pretty useful tool here called uh, called Twitter. You may have heard of it. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and one of sort of uh, Adam's main concentrations i suppose is the whole communicating out to the to the community um and one of our great tools for that is twitter so yeah well i think twitter is a great vice to be used in the classroom and also used throughout um public to kind of get a message out it's, it's a way to brand yourself but it's also a way to brand your classroom brand you as a teacher and uh brand each school individually um and market it throughout the community and it's a great information tool for different parents to receive information about what you're doing with their student and their child in your classroom day in and day out. It's also something that doesn't take a lot of time. Um, did you want to go through how to set it all up and stuff before? So I was going to definitely briefly talk about kind of the, the process and sort of just the basic idea yeah. of, how, of how the whole thing works and some of these crazy you know internet terms that you may hear you know hashtags and things like that um and so if you just give me one second we're gonna just gonna go yeah twitter twitter's very um very versatile as well it's it's a great way to get quick uh clips of information out there and when you see different retweets or different favorites from there that's how the word spreads about what you're trying to get out there and that's a nice thing. Yeah. And it's nice on a lot of different levels. You know, one, I mean, to be able to share out what's going on in your classroom, but also to collaborate with other educators, whether that's in our, you know, District 25 community or out in the world. Um, some people do, you know, in our district, have, we know have done some pretty neat things in terms of contacting classrooms in other states and other countries and have been able to kind of create a relationship uh, with other classrooms that way. Uh, it's a great way of, of gathering news quickly of, you know, so there, it kind of goes a lot of different ways. It's definitely something worth checking out. Um, and so really it's just, you know, I would suggest anybody who hasn't before head over to twitter.com um, and just sign up. It's, it's as simple as putting in your name. You know, if, if it's going to be school, like a school related Twitter project, by all means, you're able to use your, uh, district email address to be able to get in there. Uh, I particularly am one who I tweet out with uh, as Secretary Tim. Um, yeah. From my my actual account here, I can remember how to log into it over on this computer. And you know, it doesn't really matter what your username is. I think people can stress over, well, I don't know what my username is going to be, or I don't know. Um, it, it, the best part about Twitter is, is it's really personalized and it's how you want to be um, kind of looked at throughout the world. And also, 
based on your Twitter name, it doesn't mean people can't find you. They can look up your name that's attached to your account. And from there, they can find you and follow you and, and things like that. So don't stress too much about those little things. They can be they can be altered. It's just the point is getting everybody on to Twitter. Which I'm doing a very bad job of getting myself yeah. on there right now on this particular computer. Um, See, it happens to everybody. It does. It does. And so I think what we're going to do, since we're kind of running low on time, yeah. is we're going to we'll concentrate more on Twitter in terms of setting it up, how the whole thing works um, in later videos and later um, 25 with Tech 25s. Yeah. Um, and what I'd like to do is turn it on over to another great way of, of gathering information, which is going to be Google Forms. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're talking about using Twitter to go out to your classroom and, and, and share information about what's happening. Sorry. Using forums is a great way to be able to collect information quickly from your team, department, or even your parents. Yeah. Um, so one of the ways that you could do this is also um, within Google Apps. If you look over here, we're going to jump back over to Drive. And what's really neat about forums is that it gives you a nice, very quick way of creating um, whether it's surveys or data collection or registration information, and then being able to send that out in an email and get back that quickly in a spreadsheet. So under new, you can see that there are a couple options. We're going to slide up under more. And Google Forms pops up, and it brings you to this very basic um, form editor. But what I want you to know is that this could be a very simple form, one or two questions, yes or no. But it can also be a very complex uh, form if you want to get it to do things like conditional questions, going to different pages based on different responses, or requiring very specific security settings if you want to make sure that the information is only submitted by specific people. For our purposes today, we're just going to do the basic overview of what this tool can do for you. So for example, if we just wanted to get some information about a pizza party that was coming up, we can put the name of the form in here, um, info for party in the description. And then what you could see right here is we have our question title. We have some help text so that someone can further clarify what the question is asking. But most importantly, what I want to show is we look at the question type. So we have a couple where someone could input in text. Okay, This is shorter text. This is a little bit longer form text. And then we have some forced choice, things like multiple <laughs> choice, multiple check boxes, choosing from a list. But there are also a couple different options. We can have a scale or a grid. So if you wanted to have columns and rows of whether or not somebody preferred something, you could use the scale to say how much did you prefer that, how much would you be interested in something. And then you also have date and time fields, which allow you to be able to put in um, people selecting specific dates off of a calendar or time off of a you know, predetermined kind of clock. So in this case, we're just going to do multiple choice. And we're going to say, Will you attend the party? And then here we could put our options in. We'll have yes, no, not sure if I'll be hungry. So a couple other things that you can do when you're building your form, just so you know, you can make this a required question, okay, that someone has to respond or they can't submit the form. Or you can leave it as optional by unchecking that box. And then one thing that I want to draw everyone's attention to when you're developing the question is under advanced settings, each one of these question types has a different set of advanced settings. In this case, this is shuffle option order because we have a multiple choice question. Now, in this case, we don't want to shuffle these. But for example, if you're using this as a quiz or a quick formative assessment, you may want to shuffle the option order so that students don't see the same options in the same order and it can reduce things like kids sharing answers across you know, different classes. In this case, we don't need any of that. I can then add an item. Okay, If I, let's say, wanted to put in a date field, <coughs> I could say, which future date uh, Okay, And then again, we can include you know, various different options in here. But they can go down and, in essence, gives them a drop down to say what month and what day would work best for them. So in very simple terms, we've created a, a two-question form, okay, or a survey. And we can then create, you know, or, or send that out to people using the send form button. 
and simply list the email addresses or the groups that you may have created to be able to share that out with. Now, for some cases, that's easy to do. Maybe it's a few people or you have a list of your parents' email addresses. But you can also, if you've made this public, you can share this link on a blog, on your web page, um, out in a tweet if you need to, and then sharing that link out would get people back to the forum. So just to tie this up, just so you can see how this all um, kind of plays out, we're going to look at the form live. This is what somebody would see. They could create their answer quickly, hit submit. And then back in the form, what it does is when we go to click on view responses, there is an associated spreadsheet that logs when every response was, was, was submitted and then the answers that they provided. And what you can do from here quickly, just in, in, to sum up, is you can take all of the data that you've collected and then perform any spreadsheet function that you would normally do, such as totaling up or creating an average, seeing how many said yes, right from the spreadsheet itself. Or if you look at the tools, oh, sorry, under form, they even give you a summary of responses where they give you a quick visual of how the responses have come in so that you can do your next steps and once you get back to that information. So again, that's a very basic look at forms, but it's a great way to communicate, again, with your team, department, or out to your parents to get information back that you may need for actionable items within your classroom. Cool. Thank you very much. So obviously there's a ton of ways to communicate, whether that's communicating out, getting communications back. Um, and we're, we'll probably be in the next week, uh, next week's episode, be continuing on with other ways of sharing out information, getting it back, um, and just sort of collaborating amongst people. Yep. And as Tim mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast and, and something we've been trying to do, we want to throw out a couple things um, in each episode just to get ideas out there. But what's really important to us is if you want to know more about any of these things, Obviously, you have wonderful support staff in your building that can support you, but also email tech25 at sd25.org and say, I want to know more about forums or I want to know more about Twitter. I want to know more about how to um, set up groups, for example, that we'll talk about. Those are things that we can then guide you to additional videos or sit down with you and work on it to best make a strategy that works for you communicating out with who you need to. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're just going to wipe down all the equipment that Tim has, we've been sharing with Tim with our keyboards and our mice. Right. And if we don't see you next week, we'll yeah, know. In one week, we'll know you'll why. know why. Yeah, right. All right. Take care. Of <laughs> yeah. Thank you. See ya. 25 Tech 25 brought to you by Clorox. <laughs>